Okay, so I can go to the graph, I can hit zero, I press enter, it tells me that the velocity at time equals zero is negative four. So I go back to my writing here, back on the main page, second clip, that's what I write down. V of zero is negative 0.4 meters per second. Sorry, negative four. That gets multiplied by 0.1 seconds. So we'd like some tickets, just tell me what does that multiplication produce? Like what's the result of the multiplication? So Braden. 0.4 meters. 0.4 meters, or negative. Negative, yeah. So Braden, explain in words, it's like the dumbest statement ever. Explain in words. Would I explain to stand up and do a dance or something? Okay. Feel <laughs> free. <laughs> explain however you like. Dance, interpretive songs, whatever. Hey, yes, so. Words, <laughs> dance, and all, you know. Um, okay, Brain, explain. Hey, no son is a teacher. You're trying to keep track of so many things you say stupid stuff all the time. Um, Michelle Curtis, did I tell you this? We all say stupid. Michelle Curtis had her two years in a row. Back when I was teaching pre calculus and calculus. Mm -hmm. She sat right here. She's an awesome student. Got a 518 test. Um, but she kept track of every dumb thing I said all year long. <laughs> no, I actually loved it. Because well, I, I know Rochelle so well, you know what I mean? Like, I just, it was, it was really nice to At the end of the year, she gave me a book. Nine pages long. Oh, and now she put in some things that she thought were, in, you know, positive things and stuff. So it was really fun to look back and see. But it was funny. It's like, oh yeah, I can't believe I said What's the worst one you said? <laughs> to grab the book. Um, Worst when I said. Oh, I said this is funny. So who knows um, Hannah Bentley? Okay. So that year that Hannah was, um, sorry, her older sister Addie was my TA that year. I don't know why I said this, but I got really excited in class one time. Uh, Addie Bentley was sitting at the desk back there, and um, I was talking about something, and I was getting a little upset about. Don't ever do this again. Like little mistakes people make over and over again. Like you make this mistake again, I'm calling up Addie. She's gonna come beat you with a stick. <laughs> Wrote that down. Okay. All right. Reserved forever. Time. time. <laughs> this may be your opinion. Scott, are you ready? I'm gonna check it off. What's that? Just let me check my notes. Are you at the Sorry. Um. Okay, uh, Brady, what does this mean? Hey, no one's talking. Is that, no one's talking. Uh, no, good try, sort of. Isn't that how much it moved in that? Nice, nice, hey. During this 0.1 seconds, hey, listen, listen. During the 0.1 seconds, you gotta focus. During the 0.1 seconds, Carl's position would have changed by this amount. Now, that's still an estimate. Somebody tell me, why is it still an estimate? You can go way smaller. Yeah, we're, only, we're assuming that for the 0.1 seconds, the velocity did not change. It really did. But we're getting better. It's getting to be a pretty good estimate, actually. Any questions? So the integration process does this. Watch me. Then it repeats. So then it says, let's do the next one. So let's see, this would cover, one person please, hey, what time period would this be covered, please? Uh, the whole integral will, but this little tiny piece of the integral, nice, so this is zero to 0.1 seconds. Any questions? Now we go to the next time period. So we come down here. We've already taken care of the time 0 to 0.1 seconds by grabbing the velocity of time 0. Uh, one person raise your hand and tell me what's the next velocity that we will be grabbing to get the next time period. Right? 0.1. So write on your paper, please. V of 0.1. Someone else. What will be the duration of the next time period following this pattern? Still 0.1. Then Kelsey, we come over here, go back to the graph. No, don't take off. We say trace again. This time we go to point 0.1. The value is negative 3.99. So we 
go back to the screen here and write that. Oops, for one second clip. Go back and write that down. So now we have negative 3.99 meters per second. Kelsey says we multiply by 0.1 seconds. What's the result, Kelsey? Negative 0.3 meters. And what would be that time period, Kelsey? Perfect. 0.1 seconds uh, until 0.2 seconds. Oh, that's close to the Okay, so pretty good. Question. And the key thing here, Landon saw before, is that the velocity didn't really change very much. So it's a pretty good estimate, depending on what we mean by good. But, you know. There you go. Question. Let's do one more. The green. Somebody would like some tickets, tell me all the patterns we're going to write on the next slide. Chuck. Uh, you have V of 0.2, and that's going to also be 0.1 seconds. i got to look that one up. So come back here, graph, trace, 2.2, 3.96, second quit. And that time period would be what would be what chat? Um, from point two to point three seconds. I see that. Question. Okay, the integration process will continue doing this <coughs> until we've covered the entire time period zero to two seconds. Give me one or two if it makes sense to you as to how the integration process actually works. One or two. Two more tickets. Good work. Um, and then as quoting Landon again, in reality, we would like this to be much smaller than point one. When you ask your calculator to do it, it's, if I remember correctly, it's using a value about this. instead of 0.1. So it ends up doing about 200,000 computations. And it gets this result, which to three decimals matches exactly what we thought was the exact change in position for the two second time period. Question? Here we go. Awesome. OK, make some summary notes in your book here. Um, so right here, let's see. Let's turn back. This is what we need to summarize. Please write this down. Uh, you'll look back at this page of comments. Okay. This formula right here is going to be used often throughout the rest of the year. Change in position. Okay, we talked about that you can find the change in position by knowing the final position, subtracting the initial position. Write that down. Change in position can be found using the final position minus the initial position. that change of position can also be found by multiplying a velocity uh, and then elapsed time together, as long as we know the velocity isn't changing during that elapsed time. That will also compute a change in position. Write that down. Any question comes to mind, feel free to raise your hand.
Okay. Then we said that if we break it up into little increments like we just showed, if you could take change of position of like a velocity times a tiny amount of time, different velocity, tiny amount of time, add them up, that this wouldn't be a perfect computation, but it would be getting better at getting the actual change in position. This is what we were doing. This is integration right here. And then I wrote on the board that this statement, I'm going to use it a lot. Integration is simply multiplying into adding repeatedly. Please write that down. Integration is simply multiplying and adding repeatedly. Therefore, we can do an integral to find change in position. So this one in green is, I should probably put in parentheses here, this would still be an estimate. But the integral is not an estimate. If it's done, if you really can make a change in time that is infinitesimally small, the integral is perfect. It's not an estimate, it's exact. Now, when you use your calculator, it is an estimate. But if we could do the integral by making the change in time infinitesimally small, it would be an exact value. The one up here, change in position at the very beginning, uh, these are exact. This is the exact change in position. If the velocity isn't changing, that's exact. Yeah. Question. Anyone? Alright, just make sure I got make sure I lose calculators. Raise your hand if you have one of my calculators today. So one, two, just making sure. You're good. You keep wandering off, so I just gotta keep falling in the back. Do you really have a uh, tracking device in your calculators? <laughs> um, we'll go at the NSA. I can either confirm or deny that statement. It's like the, the one movie that we had, I think it was kind of about 10 years ago. Oh, uh, it's uh, There's lots of logic there. It's impossible. It's impossible. Did I tell you the police story already? I don't know. I didn't tell you the police story. It goes really well with my next question. That's why you thought it. But it didn't tell you about my police story? Oh, what did you do? Okay, so hopefully we'll have time. We might even get a spot. Okay. So, hey, is everybody good to hear? Is everybody good? Okay. Uh, here's what we're going to do now. Look here. Look here. Look here. Okay. We're going to use this. Okay. We're going to use this to figure out several different changes in position for some different situations. I'm going to give you a handout. We're going to work together. Um, Okay, so now it's time is left. We should be able to get enough of the handout done that if it's homework, it's going to be like 10 minutes of homework. Okay. So it's kind of nice for the break. So okay. let's do it.
This is an integral. This is a time interval. Got it? Okay, somebody answer the questions easy. What is the time interval's length? Go. 50 seconds. Soren, it says break that interval into, it says right here in the instructions, two sub intervals. So what would be the first, just common sense, what's the first sub interval? Uh, well, you would if you're doing EVO. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So no, you're with me. You're doing great. It says two sub intervals indicated by the data in the table. So 10. So the first sub interval goes from 10 to where? Or 40. There we go. Sorry, I didn't ask that very well, sorry. And then the second interval sort of goes from where to where? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can clear out what they mean by sub intervals indicated by data in the table. Good. You have a question. Awesome. Next thing, here's the integral. We do the integral just like I showed you a minute ago. We start at 10, okay? Time equal 10. You look at the table. You're supposed to cover the first sub interval. When we did it here, the first sub interval was a tenth of a second. Well, now the first sub interval is from 10 to 40. But because we're doing what's called a right Riemann sum, the right is important. You look at the first sub interval, 10 to 40, one person's going to raise their hand, and you tell me, what is the time that is on the right of the first sub interval? Looking for a hand. What is the time at the right side of the first sub interval? There. Uh, that would be the velocity at the right of the first oh, subject, but what's the time? 40 seconds. So Sarah, just like I did here, look. When I was doing this integral, I took a certain time and plugged it into velocity. A certain time, plugged it into velocity. A certain time, plugged it into velocity. I do the same thing here. I take the first sub interval, go to the right-hand side. Sarah, one more time, what's the time at the right-hand side of the first sub interval? 40 seconds. 40 seconds. That gets plugged into V. So please write on your paper V of 40. Close parentheses. We now must multiply by dt. dt means change in time for the first sub interval. So one person, what is the change in time for this first sub interval? Chip? 30 seconds. 30 seconds because it went from 10 to 40. So I write 30 seconds here. Okay, pause for questions. That's what we do for the first subinterval. We're supposed to do two subintervals, so we're not done yet. Please. Can you explain again how you know when it's the first subinterval? Like why would zero be technically first? Oh, perfect question, Lindsay. Um, they told me to do the integral starting at 10 and stopping at 60. So I come up here and say, I'm going to start at 10, end at 60. So this won't apply at all, because okay. it's outside of the interval. Is that your question? Yeah. Perfect. Two points. Anybody else? Integral. Yeah, it's interval and integral, yeah. No, I'm part of the Yes. We'll come back to that in a minute, but yes. Okay. Different. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Hey, Lindsay, everyone else. Hopefully you notice that on part A and part C, the integral goes from time zero to 60, so we'll have to do it differently. Okay. The pattern will be very similar, but does that help? Yeah. Good. Awesome. Please, Mikkel. Um, does that have a practice question to start on the left? So is there a reason to start on the right? Is it because it's said right? Listen to Mikkel, please. Listen to Mikkel. When I did examples, we did one on the left, and I did one on the right. Uh, now we're just following the instructions. Okay. And on the AP test, that's how it works. They simply will tell you what kind of Riemann sum to perform. So is the right Riemann sum like on the graph, how we did like, it started at four, and then it was like 3.7, and we did both those. So the right one would be like the 3.6, does that make sense? That's perfect. Yeah. In fact, it's right here, Chad. When we did that here, that is perfect. Um, this, these computations here, yeah. when we looked at the first sub-interval, and we picked the velocity on the left, we were doing a left Riemann sum. Okay. When we picked the velocity on the right, we were doing a right Riemann sum. Okay. It's perfect. Same thing. Instead of representing the table, it was what we could have thought of the table. So yeah. Anybody else? Perfect. Let's go back to here. Oops, one too many. Okay. We've got to put a plus now. So I say plus. And I'm running off to the side, so we use the black marker. 
Okay, we go to the second subinterval. One person, please raise your hand and tell me for the second subinterval, what is the value? What is the time on the right hand side, Heidi? Um, sixty. Sixty. Because I look at the second subinterval, the second subinterval starts at forty, ends at sixty. So sixty is the time on the right. So I take that value, Heidi, and I plug it into B. And I do that because this is what the mathematical symbol is telling me to do. Uh, then it must multiply by dt. Someone else, what is the change in time for that subject? 20, 20 seconds. Okay, questions from anyone? Okay, two questions. Somebody answer this. It's an easy question. With these two computations, um, so I'm answering it for you. We have covered two subintervals as instructed, and we have covered the appropriate time from 10 to 60. Because we went to the first subinterval, we picked off a time to represent the entire subinterval. We picked off a time within this subinterval. Questions? Okay, all that's left to do now is the actual computation. So we write plus, so this all becomes this. Uh, someone to help me looking for a hint. Need a helper here. There you go. So, what is V of 40 in this problem? Uh, 45. 45. What are the units over? Um, that gets multiplied by 30 seconds. Plus, uh, okay, what's V of 60? 4.6 per second. And then do that on your calculator. Somebody raise your hand when you have it. You get ready. 167 meters. 167 meters. So, Brandon, what is the 167? It's an estimate because whenever you do a Riemann sum, it's always an estimate. Uh, what is that an estimate of, Brandon? Just trace back what you wrote. Change of For what time period? Very good. Questions? Perfect. Um, as always, I give you the answers because knowing the answer doesn't help anything. Uh, you got to make sure you understand how to get the answer. But they're right here at the bottom of the last page. So. Any questions? So no. would you always recommend writing the change condition for T or something as you can speak? Uh, great question. I need to fourth about. Everyone look up. Everyone look up. Okay, this is where I'll let you be use your own wisdom. Uh, you must have memorized that every time you integrate velocity, you are finding change in position. So the number of times you need to write this is up to you. But you have to have memorized. It's going to show up again and again and again. That when you integrate velocity, you are finding a change in position. In this case, it's just an estimate because we used a Riemann sum. So, there you go. Perfect. Okay, we're going to do the, this one here, C. The pattern is extremely similar now, so it should go fairly quickly. So, it says, use a left Riemann sum with three subintervals, with three subintervals to approximate this integral. So again, just to remind you, I'm going to write change in position here. So this time we are finding the change in position. equals 0 now to 60. We do it using an integral. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 60 of the velocity multiplied by the time. And it's approximate because we're using a Riemann sum method. So we go back up to the table 
And we note that this time the integral starts at 0, goes all the way to 60. Mark it off like this. Uh, we do the same thing. We go to the first subinterval. Someone raise your hand and tell me for the first subinterval. Again, we're doing a left Riemann sum. So for the first subinterval, what is the value of time that is on the left of the first subinterval? Uh, that would be the value of the velocity. So oh. it's the value of time. Yeah. Perfect. So I write V of zero. And then Sarah. What is the change in time, dt, for that first subinterval? 10 seconds. I'm going to say plus. Uh, somebody, what's the second subinterval? What is the time that is on the left of the second subinterval? Soren? 10. 10. Sorry, we have 10. Soren, what's the 30 seconds? 30 seconds is the change in time for that second subinterval. Plus, someone else, was the time on the left of the third subinterval? Ready? 40. So, right, we have 40. Ready, what is the duration or change in time of the third subinterval? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Pause for questions. Please. So if you just put it all in the line, you don't have to like, split it up? No, it's really, when the integrals, it doesn't really matter how you do it, but this is how they typically write it on the AP test. Okay. So I say these two multiply, and I add, because we talked about integration is multiplying and adding repeatedly, and these two multiply, and then I add Uh, we just got to finish now. So somebody, yeah, you got it. Now you just work out the numbers. So quickly, so I get into the notes here. Somebody, what is the velocity at time zero? Two. So two times ten. Plus what's the velocity at time ten? Two point three times thirty. And then what's the velocity at time forty? 0.5, and that gets multiplied by 20, and the entire result, somebody? 139, and what are the units on that radius? Uh, meters per second, or meters. Which one? Or 139. Yeah, what are the units? It's meters, very good. <laughs> because what we're doing is right here, it's two meters per second. You're good. I just do that on purpose to make sure you really got it. So you've got two meters per second uh, multiplied by 10 seconds, the seconds divide out. The other thing that reminds you that it's meters is you know that when you do the integral of velocity, you're finding the change in position. That's a position measured in some number of meters. Perfect. Any questions? we got one more, then we can ask the story. Actually, two more, sorry, we're close. Okay, trapezoidal. Okay, let's do a one or two thing here. So give me a one or two if the pattern that I'm showing you here makes really good sense to you. The pattern I'm showing you for Riemann sums is making really good sense. One or two. Two points for the room. Good work. Okay. Trape if the left and right make sense, the trapezoidal is really very easy. Uh, let me demonstrate the pattern, though. So, let's see. We're finding this integral again, so it's still a change in position. So, change in position. T equals 0 to T equals 60. This is going to equal the integral from 0 to 60. Uh, the velocity, dt. Okay. Um, we, we said this earlier, Soren answered it really well, Landon answered it really well. We're calculating change of position by taking velocity, multiplying by duration and time. What do we 
theoretically do to make it be a better and better and better and better estimate? Just in general, what do we do to make it a better and better estimate? Shorten the intervals. Shorten the intervals, meaning we have more velocities that we're actually calculating with. Is that fair? Okay, the trapezoidal sum doesn't shorten the interval, but it helps with the part about how many velocities you're using. It does the following. Please write this in your notes. So you've got this interval written down. Now you're going to write approximately here. And you're going to write one half. Parenthesis. Okay, now you're going to look at the first subinterval. Someone's going to answer this. You're going to pick the value of time on the left of the first subinterval. And please, what's the value of time on the left, Heidi? Yeah. Zero. You plug that into the velocity just like before, Heidi. Stay with me. But what we do different on the trapezoidal, in addition to the one half, is we say plus. Now, Heidi, go to the first subinterval. Tell me the time that is on the right of the first subinterval. Ten. That gets plugged into the velocity as well. So what's different is three points for Heidi. We now must multiply by the change in time for the first subinterval, which is what Heidi. What did you say? Sorry, my bad. The change in time for the first subinterval. Ten. Ten. What's different, look, what's different between trapezoidal and left or right, yeah, we took both the left and the right velocity. And Derek, you know this, if you take two velocities, add them together and divide by two, what are you finding about these two things? You're finding the average. So the reason why the trapezoidal is a better estimate is not because you shortened the time intervals, but you actually took two velocities within that time interval. It was like a better pick. Does that make sense? Actually, I don't. Are you good? Questions from anyone? Chance, please. So is that 10 outside of the parentheses? Is that 10 seconds? Yes, 10 okay. seconds. Oh, that's a good idea, Chance. Look. Because, Chance, it's the same computation that we did here, except that all of this is simply to find a velocity. And then we multiply by a change in time. Okay. Perfect. Question. Ready? I was just wondering, if you ask me to do this, do you plus it? Do you plus it for the next one? Yep. And so, then when you plug it into your calculator, does you have to put the time everywhere in the middle on it? Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it on your calculator, to be honest. Like, what I would probably do is I'd say, one half times 10 is five. 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 Yeah, then I do add these two together and multiply that by five. So you don't have to use, it's kind of up to you. It's a lot of different ways. Um, we say plus. Now look, how many subintervals are we supposed to use up here? Say three. three. So how many computations do we need? Three. Three. So I put one half. Somebody would like tickets. Just pick up on the pattern and read to me what I should write. Let's go land it. One half over parentheses. Uh, v, open parenthesis, 10, close parenthesis, plus V, open parenthesis, 40, close parenthesis, times 40. Nicely done. Three tickets. Oh, yeah, my bad, sorry. 30, right? The duration of the second subinterval is 30. Questions? We need to do one more, so let's get it on the board. Plus, another one half. Somebody else wants another three tickets. Go ahead. We have 40. Plus, we have 60. Multiply by 20 seconds. And then do that computation. That will give you this result down here. You want to have a question about trapezoid? Awesome. We have one more to talk about. Go to, and then you'll just do some practice to kind of finish off the worksheet. Go to problem one. We're looking at problem number uh, C. Problem C. It says use a midpoint Riemann sum with three subintervals, it's, it's super easy, watch, to approximate this integral. So same thing again, scroll down a little bit. So if 
finding change of position. Oh, that's the first page. Time equal five to time equal 35. We're using an integral to find this change in position. approximately okay all you do is mark off the table like I taught you from 5 to 35 but you have to divide the table into three sub intervals uh, listen carefully to this word you saw in the last problem that the sub intervals are not always the same length in this case they are but it just goes back and forth depends on the problem so does anyone have any question of how I took this entire interval Divided it into three sub-intervals. So to do a midpoint sum, all you do is you say, okay, for the first sub-interval, what is the time that is in the center or midpoint of the first sub-interval? Louder? 10. 10. That plugs into the velocity. So take V of 10. Oakley, what is the change in time dt for the first sub-interval? Um, well, so look at the first sub interval. When does the first sub interval begin? Okay. No, where does the first sub interval begin? Oh, five. That's why marking is so important. Uh -huh. When does the first sub interval end? At 15. So, what is the change in time for the first sub interval? 10. 10. The midpoint was also 10, but those are different things. Uh -huh. This is a moment in time, this is a duration in time. Okay. So, I multiply by 10 seconds the change in time for the first sub interval. Hopefully. Yes. We then go to the second subinterval. So what is the moment in time that is in the center of the second subinterval? 20. 20. That gets plugged into the velocity. By the change in time for the second subinterval, which in this case is 10. Three points for Oakley. Somebody do the last one, Oakley, three as well. Sorry. Well, I just have a question. How, so just the, for the interval that you made, the 5, 15, 15, how did you? It's all based on the instruction, and it always will be. So they said use a midpoint Riemann something. So I'm going to skip that for a second. Three sub intervals, okay, equal length and values from the table to approximate the <coughs> integral from 5 to 15. So I look up here and say, okay, I start at 5 and draw that, okay, go all the way to 15. So I'm going to 35. I've got to break it into three sub intervals. So that's why I went like this. The first one goes from 5 to 15. Uh, they told me to. Of equal length. Okay. They won't always be. Uh, sometimes one they'll say three sub intervals that's simply indicated by the table. Okay. And then you can kind of see by what they're giving you. Good question. Somebody tell me what goes here. It's the last three turn. Let's go, Lexi. Uh, we have 30. Yes, yeah. One or two makes perfect sense. Perfect. Two more tickets. Here's the story. It goes with the GPS. Oh, please, sir. Um, if you look at all these different methods, are you Because they're just all different ways of estimating. Now, in general, um, Sarah, the uh, trapezoidal is the best. Midpoint's pretty good as well. Just picking the middle seems to, in general, give a better estimate. But that doesn't really matter. They don't really ask much about that. So are you going to, like, how is it going to use that? The test question will tell you. You have to know all four because you can't predict which one they're going to ask you to do. But, yeah, just do whatever the test does. We have to tell you. Hmm.